Today I'm going to try to demystify this concept of trigonometry, um, specifically aimed at grade 10 level, or if you're more advanced but you never really got it, um, this will be good for you as well. So some things that I think no one really understands is that trig is based on a whole bunch of things you've already done, and then it integrates them all in a way that's a bit scary. So just to be clearer on the things that you need, um, so basically your prior knowledge, you're going to need to use Pythagoras much more than you ever used it before. So be aware of that. If you can't remember how to do Pythagoras with right angled triangles, then you need to go and refresh that before you're able to do trig. Okay, and then there's a concept that's going to be really important, and that is the concept of a ratio or a fraction. So going back to grade nine, and those ideas, okay? You need to understand what those things mean. So something over something else. So we used to define it in grade nine as a rational number where A over B has two numbers that are both integers, okay? And then there's the Cartesian plane. But what we're going to use with a Cartesian plane is we're gonna use it twice. Um, if you do geography, you will deal with bearing and then you have degrees where it starts zero there and then it goes around clockwise. Now in maths, we're going to start with zero here, and then we're going to go up to 90 there, and 180 here, and 270, and then back to 360 here. So I said Cartesian plane, and now I'm talking about degrees, but you need to be able to conceive of both types of Cartesian planes on top of each other. The other one is the one with X and Y. And basically, we're going to put X and Y Cartesian plane on top of the one with the degrees and deal with them at the same time. And that's quite tricky for most people when they start doing trig. Okay, then um, you need to be okay with angles in a triangle. Mostly we deal with right angled triangles. Certainly in grade um, 10, all we do is right angled triangles with trig. But the idea that if, for example, this uh, angle here was 30 degrees, then this one would be 60. So angles in a triangle that add up to 180. You may remember this. We might say that X is an element that goes from negative 270 to 90. And then I, for example, include the 270 and exclude the 90. Now, if this is troubling for you again, you're going to need to get through that. If you've already studied functions, you probably dealt with that quite a bit, so it may have helped you or it may have just confused you more. It is really important that you understand what's going on. So in the same way, you could put negative 270 there and you could have 90 here and you could have X in the middle. So to show that it includes the 270, I'd have a, a less than or equal to and to show that it excludes the 90, I would just have it like that. Okay, so those concepts are going to be very important, both of them actually. And then you're also going to be able to use your graph knowledge because we have trig graphs and they also go in paper too. Um, and then something else that's really useful is your geometry skills. So at some point, quite far into trig, you're gonna be dealing with triangles and solving them and the concept of external angles in a triangle and so on. And some of the basic geometry, not the more complicated stuff, but the basic geometry you're going to need. So to start off, let's look at a Cartesian plane and consider how we could label it in two different ways at the same time. So you've obviously done our graphs and we've got our X and Y. Okay. And then X will go negative there, Y will be negative here. I'm stating the obvious because sometimes when we do something new, we forget all the stuff that we already knew. And then the other thing to consider is we're going to label the degrees. Okay, so here along the x-axis, this is going to be zero degrees. Going up there, it's obviously 90, right? Here we've got 180, and here 270, and zero and 360 are the same thing. Okay, so you've got to get your head around the fact that these things are happening at the same time. We are dealing with angles and we're dealing with the X and Y values. And we're actually going to start referring to them as measurements. 
Okay, now you're not going to get a circle in trig diagrams. I've drawn it in because I want you to understand that when I draw this red line coming out from the origin, that is a radius. Okay, and I'm going to call the radius an R. I'm going to label it as R. Because that is part of the concept that makes trig so complicated for a lot of people. So what's clear here, I hope, is that as we've gone up from the x-axis up to R, We've gone up by a certain number of degrees, okay? And we're going to use Greek symbols in trig, and you'll get used to them pretty soon. And this is going to be, I'm going to use the most common one, which is theta. Okay, so a little thing like that, okay? Now, that is theta degrees up. I'm drawing a radius out, okay? And here is your Cartesian plane knowledge becomes really helpful, and that is to know that this point has an x coordinate and a y coordinate okay so its x coordinate is as far right of the origin as it goes right okay so i'm actually going to drop a line down here down onto the x-axis because that's going to be the look of the triangles you deal with in trig Okay, so I'm creating a right angle triangle, and I'm going to put the right angle in there. Right, so that has an X and a Y, the point up there, and the X point is dealing with how far this is. So actually your X point, whatever that number is going to be, and we are still dealing with variables now, that point over there is going to be the same amount of distance as this part this side of the triangle is so this is also x okay the distance of that side is x the same amount as this is from the origin the y value there is the amount from there upwards so actually your triangle has three lengths in it three sides which are x y and r so the crux of trig is that relationship between x, y, and r, and this angle. And they're all variables for now, okay? So what we can see, I think quite clearly, is that if, if the theta got bigger, right, and it was up there, then clearly my y would get more and my x would get less. So there must be a relationship between the angle and the distance x and y, okay, but what would happen to the r? If I kept it on the circumference of this circle with the degrees, r would always stay the same. But x and y would change and shift as we're going up. And those relationships between x, y, r and the angle theta in this case is the crux of trig. Okay, so they are definitions. And I think what happens is, People get really scared with new terminology, and we don't have to be. We can just go, okay, these are just ways, new ways of talking about old stuff. Okay, so the first one is the sine ratio, and I'm going to keep using words like ratio to help you connect it. Okay, so we talk about the sine ratio. Its full word is sine with an E on the end, okay, and it's the sine function, the sine ratio of that angle and that's very very new so we talk about a sine function or sine ratio of theta it's something that is done to the theta that gives us exactly the same as if we had the ratio or the fraction y over r okay now you're going to be remembering this stuff off by heart but it's really good to know where it comes from the second one is the cosine ratio. So when you take the cosine ratio or function of the angle, you get the same as you get when you divide x by r. And the third one that we deal with is the tangent. You've heard that word before. If I take the tangent function of theta, I'm going to have y over x. There are three more where it's r over y, r over x, and x over y. These guys have reciprocals, but you only really deal with that towards the end of grade 10 trigonometry.